today let's discuss about income from other sources as we have already discussed earlier there are five heads of income they are income from salary income from host property income from profits or gains from business or profession income from capital gains and income from other sources today we are going to discuss about income from other sources income from other sources is a residuary head of income salary is going to specifically cover all the heads of income all the sources of salary in salary head similarly house property and what cannot be covered in any of these four heads will be covered under income from other sources income from other sources could capture something like winning from horse races this cannot be captured in any of the four heads above so an author who has written a book he gets income his income is recorded in income from other sources now let's go to income from other sources in detail there are a few prerequisites to be learned before what we know income from other sources there are certain sources where the tds would have been done if tds is not done no tds is done tds means tax deducted at source is not done we call this gross in other words there is no need for any adjustment gross is the amount which should be considering for the purpose of income if gross is given is good enough you won't have to do anything else if net is given that means tds has been done there are various rates at which tds would have been done in case of interest on securities tds would have been done at the rate of 10% in case of winnings from lotteries thirty percent TDS would have been done so we'll have to gross them up the formula for grossing up is amount received into 100 divided by 10 10 tds what has been done case of winnings from lotteries amount received into 100 divided by 70 here it is 90 tds from 100 we deduct 10 so this is 90 so this is the crossing up formula we'll have to use this is a prerequisite before we go on to the main section of interest on income from other sources income from other sources usually covers for your syllabus of bcom for bangalore university the following things which usually appear repeatedly appear in your exams they are interest on securities interest on securities if gross amount is given we will have to consider that for a purpose of taxation fully taxable if net is given we will have to gross it up and then consider it for taxation the formula for grossing up we have just discussed then comes our this grossing up formula tds done would have been 10 percent 
winnings from horse races. Here again, if it's not grossed up, we'll have to gross it up. Next, we have interest received from post office savings bank account. This is exempt. Any interest received from post office savings bank is totally exempt. Then we have dividend. Dividend means it includes final dividend, interim dividend, and proposed dividend. By whatever name called dividend means these three things. It includes dividend includes final dividend, interim dividend, and proposed dividend. Dividend would have been received from a domestic company. Any dividend received from a domestic company is exempt. Any dividend received from a foreign company or a cooperative society is taxable. This is about dividend. Next we have debentures. Debenture interest. This we would have received from a local authority like Karnataka Electricity Board or a foreign company. local authority or from government securities. Always interest on debentures, the amount received will be gross. That means no adjustment need be done. So with this, we have covered five items. The sixth one is certain expenses, expenses on certain income is not allowed as deduction. The certain word certain means it covers certain expenses, certain incomes. The incomes are income from betting, income from lottery, income from crossword puzzles. Income from horse race, income from gambling. These are the five sources of income. If it's earned and certain expenses spent for earning this income, these expenses will not be allowed as deduction. This is a very important thing. Repeatedly questions have been asked on this. Then the last we have family pension. Family pension is not fully taxable. At the same time, it's not fully exempt. The amount actually received less exempt
one rupees fifteen thousand or one third of amount received whichever is less whichever is less in future will be abbreviated as w e l whichever is less so the least of these two will be deducted least of this of this will be deducted and this will be the taxable family pension with this we will start working out problems this is the theoretical part of it this is the rules based on which you have sums in your exams this covers all your 10 question papers and with this rules we can work out lots of problems now let's start with working out problems <laughs>